got lots of fun. Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, we're starting up, so please take your seats. Um, we're still um, in the uh, management section of the, um, the workshop, and um, our first presentation this morning is by Alfonso. Yeah, and um, he's going to be talking about uh, multi species um, reference points and harvest controls. Hi, uh, good morning. Uh, well, yeah, I'm Alfonso Perez. Yeah, I work at the Institute of Marine Research in Bergen, in, in Norway. And uh, I'm going to present here a, a, a piece of work that was part of a project uh, funded by the European Union dealing with the multi-species uh, fisheries assessment for NAFO. And here this part is related with the reference points and harvest control rules when considering uh, multi-species interaction. Uh, many different institutions contributed to this work, especially the Institute of Marine Research in Bergen and the Joint Research Center in, in ISPA. So the work is centered in the NAFO area and Northwest Atlantic Fisheries Organization area, exactly in the Flemish Cap. There is a deep water mountain that is separated from the Grand Banks by the Flemish Path Plus a deep channel and has a system of currents that ensure or makes difficult the movement of eggs and larvae from this Flemish Cap to the Grand Banks. So at the end, the dynamic of the stocks there is quite uh, quite independent from the Grand Banks, especially for the shallower stocks, uh, about 500 meters left. The fishing history shows that it's a system relatively very simple with redfish and, and cod being most of the catches since 1960s until the early 1990s that as many other stocks in the area, cod collapsed and redfish almost collapsed too. And right at that time, there was a new fishery starting the shrimp fishery uh, since the 1990s and uh, in 2010 that shrimp fishery collapsed too and then right at that moment the cod fishery was reopened so something interesting going on there if we look at the survey indices about uh, biomass for example here is cod redfish and shrimp and also greenland hollywood but especially cod redfish and shrimp we can observe already there the typical well, complementary dynamic and that it reminds like prey and predator with cod decreasing, increasing uh, shrimp, increased redfish, decreased shrimp, increased cod. So yeah, up and down. So this together with the knowledge we had about the diet, a long time series since 1993, uh, where we can observe that cod preys on cod itself, cannibalism, but also on redfish and shrimp and redfish is spraying on shrimp and also cannibalism in, in redfish. This is diet composition over time. So all that together gave us information to start exploring the extent of the impact of uh, these uh, trophic interactions. We presented some studies that together with the changes in the NAFON convention that were approved two years ago, made the institution uh, to move forward to, towards an ecosystem uh, approach and take into consideration those uh, interactions between the, the, the components in the ecosystem. So then the European Union wanted to contribute to that uh, uh, line of work by, yeah, for example, with this project, yeah, that is a multi-species fisheries assessment for NAFO. First time we are exploring that approach in that area and there are different tasks uh, the main tasks related with what I'm going to present here is these three, updating and improving an existing multi-species model with cod redfish and shrimp on it, and also exploring by the first time how to implement that, use that model for uh, assessment purposes, uh, like using the estimates of natural mortality in single species stock assessment, and also exploring, uh, developing an MC framework that I don't mean we are doing an MSC, but developing that framework that can be used to explore yeah, different options for reference points and harvest control rules from that multi-species perspective, and also start analyzing trade-offs at the ecological and economic level that can be useful for managers. The multi-species model, uh, as I show here, it's a model with three stocks, cod, redfish, and shrimp, different subpopulations, 
change of sex, uh, maturity uh, processes, um, uh, well, different fleets fishing in each of the stocks uh, with uh, trophic interactions, that is the point here, cannibalism in cod and redfish, and cod preying on redfish and shrimp, while redfish preying on shrimp. Also, we have uh, the bottom temperature affecting the consumption on cod and some other external preys that, uh, yeah, like alternative preys that are not dynamic in the model. Uh, this is a gadget model. Yeah? It's a, we've been talking already a little bit about it. It's a very flexible tool with a lot of possibilities to model biological and ecological processes with drawbacks, like it is very slow, especially in a multi-species uh, context and without capacity to, uh, to measure the uncertainty, uh, but with a lot of possibilities from the ecological side. And important is that this model is data-driven. We have data for every processes, process we are modeling uh, here. So the output uh, from the model are abundance and biomass estimates that are in the line of the estimates from single species stock assessment uh, with some differences as you could expect from when you consider trophic interactions, but it's still in the line of, of those estimates. It could be considered a proper stock assessment model in the sense of the information that you can get and the information you are using to, to, to inform the model. Uh, and, but the main output that we have at this point is these estimates of natural mortality by age and year for each of the three stocks. Uh, here, this is a, yeah, a lot of information there. I just want to indicate that predation mortality is at the level of fishing mortality in importance, maybe affecting to different ages depending on the time period we are considering, uh, depending on the stock, but it's still you can see that for some stocks, they are overlapping the same ages. They have sometimes predation more important than fishing and some other times the other way around. So this is already telling you that you have to take this into consideration when you want to plan uh, management strategies for each of these stocks. They are very, very much connected. The first uh, approach was estimating, well, providing the estimates of natural mortality for single species stock assessment in the 3M COD uh, benchmark. It was one of the options that was explored. Uh, at the end, it was not taken as a way to go. The, it was taken an, another option that was a GISLASON or a mix of uh, options uh, based in life history trace to estimate natural mortality at age. For COD, in this case, it may be not that different because Predation mortality in cod is happening mostly at age one and two, and, but, but still, I mean, this can be something that could be discussed with a way to move, but it was not chosen, but at least it was already taken into consideration in that benchmark by the first time in, in NAFO. So the second uh, step, it was using that model to explore reference points harvest control rules. Well, this is the harvest control rule, the shape of the harvest control rule used in NAFO with the uh, precautionary reference points building by trigger. And then the FMSY, that is a limit there in NAFO, they are aiming at another F that is ensuring that you will be below billing less than 10% probability. And especially when we are thinking in, in multi-species approach, this uh, FMSY doesn't have uh, much uh, of a sense because you are never going to find that for all the species you are working at the same time. So we defined first the, the reference points, the, the precautionary reference points based in the stock recruitment relations using the data from the multi-species model. And those BLIM and B-trigger are in the line of the values that are known for many years and used for these stocks. So this could be different, but it still can be discussed, but it's for the purpose of this work is, is enough, is good enough. And then uh, to, now we want to explore different combinations of F for all the three stocks. So uh, as I said, gadget is, is, uh, is, uh, is deterministic. So then uh, the first approach is, okay, in a deterministic way, we are going to run simulations with many combinations and we are going to explore all that space. And then once we have all those options, we are going to choose those that we want to explore in a uh, probabilistic way assessing uncertainty in recruitment and other processes. So we have 8,000 combinations of these 20 values per species gives you a lot of combinations. We run during this period and we estimate in the equilibrium the mean SSV and yield. 
for all the three stocks. What we can see already is this kind of plots where you can see already how the productivity and the SSV changes as you fish uh, all the three stocks together. For example, for cod, you can see how uh, it is very important how are you fishing on shrimp to define the SSV, especially when the F on cod uh, is very low. And this is due to the, uh, to the, if you fish more on shrimp, you have less prey and then cannibalism is higher. So your SSV is lower and your productivity will decrease a little bit. But it is especially important when you look at redfish, for example, it's clear if you increase the F on cut, then the SSV and the productivity in redfish will increase because you reduce the predation. But interestingly, you will have a very a much wider range of Fs that are possible for redfish when you're fishing more on cut. And especially it's interesting here, shrimp, because you will have shrimp above Belim only when you're fishing very high on cut or very low on cut. And the reason is that cut is a, predator on redfish, that is a predator on shrimp too. So if you leave more cut there, you can have uh, this kind of interesting patterns. So yeah, so then we have many different combinations and then we didn't have clear guidelines from the managers. So it was a first approach. We just want to start exploring this multi-species approach, how it will look like and so on. So then we decided our own uh, objective that was, okay, we want to have all the three stocks about billing with more than 10%, uh, so the risk is lower than 10% to be below bidding. So then if we look at all the combinations, 8,000, we only found 96 combinations that were able to keep the three stocks about billing in a deterministic way. So this is very low and is telling you already a lot about the in how strong those interactions are, right? So this, from those 96, we select 13 combinations being representative of uh, those possibilities. And then now we want to run simulations considering uncertainty. This is why we use the A4A FLR uh, framework that Ernesto presented the other day. What we did, it was changing here the operating model. So we include the multi-species model, the GATCAP, the gadget multi-species model there. It was complex, not easy. Still, we were able to do it. Uh, and this was more or less the approach. So you have the operating model that will provide information that will go through an observation or model, three different management procedures for each stock with an independent stock assessment, harvest control rules, yeah, and catches that goes through implementation error and again to the operating model. In this case, what we use it was a shortcut option. So directly from the operating model to the harvest control rule. And we estimating the assessment error using the retrospective pattern from the single species uh, stock assessment models. Um, that was the way to go at this, at this uh, step. We uh, introduced uh, recruitment uncertainty based in the variability that we observed around the uh, model stock recruitment relationship. When we ran long-term forecast, again, the same period, 2017, 2050, but now considering this assessment error and recruitment uncertainty, we can already start assessing how many times our stock will go below Belim. And in these 13 F combinations, we observed that none of them were able to keep the three stocks more uh, with a lower risk at 10% uh, of being below Belim. So the reason is what I showed before, that if you want to have shrimp above Belim, you need to fish very hard on cod and redfish. So then the conclusion is that we couldn't keep the three species, the three stocks above Belim at the same time. So then uh, the next step is that, well, okay, we can now try to uh, disregard the state of one stock and focus in the other two and see what happens and doing that one by one. We don't want to discriminate any, all, uh, any of the three stocks. And this is what I'm going to show a bit uh, fast now is, uh, for example, in this case, uh, there were many possible combinations of F from those 8,000, I remember like 2,000 or so that were able to keep cod and redfish above Belim. When we disregard the state of shrimp, we selected this number and then we found a few combinations where the risk was below the 10% for both cod and redfish. Then also disregarding cod, we focus on keeping shrimp and redfish above Belim. We success with redfish, but not with shrimp. It is still about much about the 10% risk of being below Belim shrimp. Uh, and then also disregarding redfish, you will success with cod to keep it below that risk of being below Belim, but not for shrimp. 
And then, okay, what happens with shrimp? What if we disregard cod and shrimp and redfish, sorry? We focus only on shrimp to keep it at, in the safe side. But even in this way, it was difficult. It seems there is, yeah, it's uh, uh, the recruitment is very, very sporadic, very variable, and it doesn't show like a good stability uh, capacity to be about uh, that building that we defined. So next step that we thought it was, well, maybe the problem is that there is an excessive uh, predation. What is we try a different shape for the harvest control rule? Not only one stage, but we are going to introduce for cut only, we tried it only for cut, a uh, second set of reference points where we will increase the fishing pressure when cut is above a given SSV. Yeah, with the knowledge that we have more or less of uh, but the stock, we think that this 40, 45,000 tons is, is a good point. This is something to be discussed, but just uh, as a first uh, step, is, is, it looks sensible. So then we run simulation for these four combinations of F with that second increase in the, in the F for cod. And what we observe is that the percent, the probability of being below the limit was lower in that two stage harvest control rule uh, for cod, but it was especially lower for, for redfish. So yeah, it showed that it, it worked. Now here I've only been looking at the BLIM because as I said, this is not, a, we were not, a, we didn't have the intention nor the time, not the budget to do a proper work. It was just the first approach. And we only look at the BLIM, uh, but you can look at many other aspects of the, the productivity and the dynamic in your stocks. And also you can start including here economic uh, analysis. Here I show only a very uh, general and broad uh, economic uh, parameter, but uh, you can look at many others. And this is information that the managers could use to, to take their decisions. So in conclusion is that it, it, it seems that it is not possible to have the three stocks about BLIM, that uh, disregarding one of the stocks may allow to find uh, 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 good combinations of F uh, in, from the precautionary perspective for the others. And uh, only when shrimp was disregarded, we could find uh, good combinations of F or cod and redfish at the same time. And that finally a two-stage harvest control rule seems uh, a, a good way to go when you have a predator uh, with a yeah, very high capacity to affect the other populations and especially with cannibalism. In this model, uh, well, the intention was trying to include also technical interactions because the, in this area, it's very important. We have seen that uh, the, the fleet fishing on cod is, is catching up to 30% of that catch in redfish and the other way around. Redfish uh, will fish to 10%. So this is, these are very important values also. And if you, when you're projecting this in your simulations, uh, it should be there included to really assess how your, your strategies are affecting uh, to your other populations. Uh, I tried to do that in gadget, but uh, although you can do, it is not uh, well designed to do it properly. Now we are working to connect Gadget with Eiffelbella, and that may be an option that uh, could allow. Eiffelbella is another uh, package uh, within the FLR uh, library that uh, takes into account these uh, mixed fisheries and uh, they do a proper modeling of how the catches are going to be distributed with the different stocks and so on. So this is work we are doing right now. And uh, yeah, so, uh, two? Yeah, okay. So then the, there was a, a, another uh, element that is, oh, how important is considering these technical and ecological inter elements in, the, in that general model? So, I mean, multi-species model may be thought, I've, I've heard about that these days, about using it as a stock assessment model or as a simulation model, that is what I've been using so far. Well, uh, you know, stock assessment, we want to have these numbers very well. We want to know this quite well also, so we can get a lot of information, our, our fleet, our stock, how it works and so on. So then we get, for example, this stock recruitment relation. I can tell you that if you include here natural mortality from a multi-species model, this relation may be 
you can find something much better because SSB is going to be probably very similar depending on how the predation affects your stock, but this is going to be quite different, probably the early ages. So this will be probably different if you consider here natural mortality from the multi-species. But then you use it here, or maybe you assume average in the previous years or so, but when you project your stock, if you are considering a constant natural mortality, you, be, you may be underestimating or overestimating your biomass. And uh, this, for example, in the Flemish cap cod, during a period of high predation, it was assumed 0 to 2 mortality. And then there was in the retrospective pattern, all this trend to consistently reduce the estimate of the SSB because yeah, it was an overestimation of, the, of your biomass in the next year because the, estimate, the natural mortality there was too low. So my opinion is that not at the stock assessment model is too slow, big, complex, uh, if small changes in the model may affect a lot of the other stocks uh, and it's not operational within the time uh, schedule and so on that you have for the stock assessment. But I will think that that should be used in, the, in, in, in support of single species stock assessment in the way of using that natural mortality that is already done in many different areas. And uh, I think that the need of considering those trophic interactions is going to be every time more and more important because uh, if we are recovering of our stocks to have a better state, you know, with more diversity of ages, larger individuals and so on, the predation is going to be every time more important in comparison to fishing, uh, to fishing mortality. And I would think that, yes, we will, I think I would like to see that uh, capacity in the general model because then you could use it to estimate those, provide those estimates of natural mortality that are from a model that is using the same data than your assessment model, for example, with the same structure kind of, you are not comparing things that are too different. Uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, and then as a simulation model, as I showed in this work, it should be done to, uh, to facilitate uh, or to make possible assessing the management strategies from considering these interactions. And I think it's interesting to have the trophic interactions also there because then we will be creating a model that I think doesn't exist yet, multi-species model with all those capacities of the flexibility of gadget, but also with capacity to to assess the, to give a value for the uncertainty, to be fast in the optimization and we don't have that yet. So. Um, yeah, so there are some other stuff, but uh, yeah, I think we can go to the questions. Okay, thank you. So does anyone have a question? Yeah, Jim. Uh, great talk. Uh, on the uh, bee limb issue, just to clarify, they were single species bee limbs, is that correct? And then um, the second part, Historically, is there um, any data or information on whether historically they were all above B limb at the same time? And if so, why wouldn't, yeah. I mean, doesn't that kind of mean that the models need something? <laughs> yeah, well, the thing is that at the end, everything you get here, everyone that is working in that area will think that it's uh, completely makes sense because as I showed before, the shrimp fishery was inexistent until cod and redfish collapsed. So it's always been a very low level, uh, the, the population, shrimp population, when cod and redfish were at healthy state. Yeah, so yeah, that belief is coming from an estimate that we are doing now from a period where the stock went to levels that probably if you have your cod and redfish at good uh, health, a good state, you will never find uh, those values of the biomass for shrimp. So it is the case that the bee limbs were never all above, or sorry, that the stocks were never above your current bee limbs historically. Yeah, because, uh, because uh, yeah, I mean, we are using data for shrimp from a period where it was at the level that was never before. So that bee limb is coming from that time. Uh, so as soon as you recover your stocks, you are going to be below that value. That's why if you want to have your uh, shrimp about that level that we define for billion, then you need to, to, to collapse the other two stocks. That's the thing. Uh. <laughs> okay, John, yeah. 
Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the very interesting presentation. Uh, I guess my question is very similar to Jim's. And, and why wouldn't you base BLIM on just running out the multi-species model, assuming, say, no fishing at all for, for any species, and see what the steady state uh, biomass is for shrimp under those circumstances and use that as the basis for your BLIM? Yeah. Well, the problem of that is that then you're going to territories that we've... Uh, yeah, how, how much would you believe on that? It's like, for example, in, in shrimp, is uh, uh, in these simulations, I had to introduce kind of a carrying capacity. Uh, we don't know about that, but uh, more or less, assuming that the maximum level that we observed was the maximum level that would be possible and so on. So. I mean, at the end, you have to, as I said, this model was based in data. That was the intention, right? So when you start introducing this kind of parameters, it's just start assuming a, a very strong assumption. So yeah, it could be uh, something to explore, but always, always keeping in mind that then you're getting into territories that are uh, yeah, strong assumptions there. fish uh, one species to a certain level for X number of years and then switch the fishery to another species and that would have a more optimal take from the whole system. Because mm -hmm. you're trying to fabricate something anyway. You've never had a system where you've had a good shrimp and a good cod and a good redfish. So you're trying to fabricate, invent something that is optimal. So having a temporal aspect to that fishery, I think. Yeah, yeah no, I didn't try that one, but uh, yeah, that sounds uh, something to look at, yeah. Uh, Maybe just a fun modeling game. <laughs> yeah, especially, yeah, because at the end, what we see in this system is that the recruitment is so, so important, yeah? because also it seems to be a kind of differences in the preference of uh, water temperature by cod and, and shrimp. So on top of the predation interactions, there is a kind of environmental effect in the recruitment of one and the other, right? So it may be that you get into a situation where even if you fish uh, very low on cod, you are not going to get it at high levels because the environment is not favoring the recruitment. So then this kind of adaptive simulation, depending on how your recruitment is and how you fish the other, maybe, yeah, that could be something interesting to explore. Yeah, Nick. Um, thank you, Alfonso. Um, yeah, my question relates to the computational limitations of Gadget. I, I seem to recall that it is actually an integrated age length model. So your population is an age length matrix. I was just wondering, have you considered what benefits could be gained in, in programming this in TMB? Uh, perhaps taking advantage of the sparse matrix calculations and perhaps the parallel processing that's possible with TMB? Yeah, well, I mean, that's something that I cannot do myself, <laughs> but I've been talking to Bjarke very often about that and, and probably he can give you a better answer. Yeah. Well, yeah, we have actually been thinking about this. Um, uh, the reason why Gadget isn't using any kind of automatic differentiation is sort of a tragic history, historical artifact. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and uh, we, it was the problem. The gadget was started in, 19, in the late 1990s, and uh, when we were considering this, the uh, well, not we, I was still in, in high school when this was um, the um, the um, uh, just the amount of, of memory needed to do all this was prohibitive. So that's basically why we why the, the decision was not to include this at that time. Um, I th regarding to the sparse matrix structure, there is a lot of, uh, lot of uh, ways to, uh, to improve the efficiency of the code, which, was, which, which, are, which is part of the design. So, uh, so I, I, I don't think that, that is, I mean, essentially, for conceptually, there is an H length matrix, but it's, it, it, uh, there is, uh, the data structure is pretty efficient. So don't think that's a big issue here. Um, but there's some light at the end of the tunnel. We actually got funding to uh, implement TNB 
into uh, into 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 a sort of a gadget-like structure. We just haven't decided whether or not there's going to be a full rewrite of the whole thing, which would probably set us back a little bit, or if it's a good idea to actually try to incorporate those things into gadget as is. We that's just a discussion that we will, we will just have in next year. Yeah, but definitely it has to be done. <laughs> I think. But I have one question, just uh, because we have been trying to do a inshore strength model for in Iceland using gadget, and we have had considerable problems because there's there is usually a lack of age with these invertebrates, and uh, just to to actually estimate the level of the uh, of the shrimp stock, so we need to uh, add some some sort of um, I mean. If you just look at the, the these are equivalent solutions to to the to, to the estimates of of, of of swim stock, we we see that the biomass can vary wildly from a factor of ten without of out that seeing any significant differences in in the likelihood. But of course, we then we looked at in the biological process, like the stock recruitment relationship, they seem to be um, behaving better when at a certain levels than others. Uh, so, how did you choose the uh, the actual level of the shrimp stock here? Sorry, but the actual level for what was it? Yeah, just the actual level of the, the shrimp stock because you you don't have age data, I assume, in, uh, for for the shrimp in this model. Yeah, yeah, we have. Yeah, those are coming from not really from the age determination, but modeling. So at the end, you have uh, age length relation. Uh, yeah, from. Uh, uh, experts working in the assessment of the stock. That's why we could, yeah, work with that. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>